Okay, listen up, ladies. I'm here to empower you. Today, I'm gonna share with you how I went from living paycheck to paycheck to making six figures. I need you to keep watching until the end of the video because that is when I'm gonna be sharing my biggest secret. But first, I need you to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, follow me on TikTok, and then comment your social security number on my most recent TikTok. I am here for you. I just need you to send $50 to my PayPal, link in the description, because that will show me that you're actually invested in trying to better yourself. And some of you babes have come to me and are like, I want to better myself, but $50 is kind of a lot of money in a crashing economy. And to you I say, what is $50 compared to the cost of a college education? And what I'm offering you is better than a college education. Because you're going to have pictures of you traveling to post on your Instagram. And photos of you traveling on Instagram make you look hot. What does college education get you? Critical thinking skills? Critical thinking skills are not hot. Have you ever heard anyone say, damn, check out her critical thinking skills? No. Ew. Hey Siri, what are critical thinking skills? You've probably come across people who will tell you they have the answers as to how you can become financially successful. Though they can be beautifully disguised behind charm and a clean aesthetic, the claims that they make are usually only founded in anecdotes and are quite often used to rope you into the downline of their MLM. But as long as there are people out there making outrageous claims, we skeptics will be here to debunk them. We even debunk each other. It's our love language. I wanted to share with you guys some of my very favorite things that I've been using on my stretching skin as I am pregnant and growing every single day. MLM products are usually geared towards women and who better to sell to women than women. However, we would be more accurate in calling these products props since the primary goal of an MLM is to sell you a job and manipulate you into committing to labor without appropriate income or sustainability. If you're not distracted by the enticing language scripted into MLM career pitches, if you can remain practical, you might ask yourself, would a company that is founded in ethical business practices and offering quality goods and services need to resort to selling a lifestyle to potential workers rather than selling a product to customers? If a business has a good reputation based on high caliber merchandise and working conditions, skilled workers typically compete for open positions within their company. While it's true that established companies will propose special perks to appeal to workers with expertise, these aren't typically the first things men mentioned in a job interview at a corporation, nor are potential benefits thrown out to people with little to no training fashioned like a dangling carrot. Best practice would be to tell you about the benefits that match someone of your position and skill level, not to tell you about the company founder's home life because despite what MLMs would like you to believe, you are most likely not getting in on the ground floor of a Fortune 500. Let's identify more red flags you can frequently find on almost any MLM journey by analyzing my interaction with MLM recruiters. At my low paying teaching job, most of the women working there have a side hustle, and the majority of those side hustles involve MLMs. A while back, I expressed to my coworker that I was feeling burdened by the place that I was in financially. She told me about a financial mentorship program she was a part of and asked if I wanted to give it a try. I thought checking it out might be a good idea since maybe there were things I could learn to alleviate my financial stress. So we agreed to meet up at a local coffee shop with her mentor. When we sat down with the woman, they started asking me about how I felt bogged down financially. Did you catch that? Red flag number one. I was feeling vulnerable. Vulnerability highly affects decision making. The women then started telling me about this couple named Freddie and Sarah. They told me Freddie and Sarah had been able to retire in their 20s and now are able to spend their time helping other people gain the same financial freedom. They also made Freddie and Sarah sound quite elusive. The subtext was, you want to meet these people, but you have to prove that you are going to be worth their time. Freddie and Sarah want to help you out of the kindness of their hearts. They just want to know that they're investing in someone with a good why. Red flag number two. If they were simply offering financial mentorship, 
then why use a compliance technique on me? By asking me to come up with a why statement, a reason why I would want financial freedom, they were seeking to coerce me into becoming emotionally invested. They advanced with the foot in the door technique, which is our red flag number three, by asking me to read a book before the next time we would meet. Business of the 21st Century by Robert Kiyosaki. I was skeptical, but I knew I couldn't be forced to sign up for anything, and I also get curious sometimes. So I read the book. Here are some things that Kiyosaki suggests in the book. A large part of the reason people stay poor is because they take financial advice from the wrong people. While it's true that it's advantageous to take advice from people with experience in whatever you are learning, this particular MLM uses this idea to reinforce in-group versus out-group bias. Basically, only get your information from people in our MLM, which is red flag number four. You'll be better off financially if you have passive income specifically from real estate investment. You should have multiple streams of income. The best way to have enough money to invest in real estate is to first join and succeed in an MLM. While some of the things in Kiyosaki's books are true, this particular MLM uses the strategies listed in the book to create a doctrine that is taught as the only way to success. And it's only after you read the book and return to the coffee shop that these MLM recruiters will tell you what they're really up to. They wanted me to open an online store where I had to sell at least $200 worth of merchandise per month. The merchandise consisted of a lot of household products, so they claimed it was already stuff my friends and family members would need anyway. They would be getting a portion of the profits from my monthly sales, just as I would get a portion of the profits from anyone I signed up below me. And if I didn't want to sell to anyone, one, I could just spend $200 a month on those things that I would probably need anyway. Red flag number five, do you know what it's called when you're not making any outside sales and selling directly to recruits? A pyramid scheme. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se. It's The $200 quota was just another foot in the door because while they initially gave me requirements that seemed doable, my friend was constantly upping her game to meet high pressure demands as time went on. More carrots, more sticks. Before I continue with my story, here's Taylor from the Antibot with some facts. Thanks so much, Autumn. Autumn's story so far is an accurate representation of how MLMers attempt to recruit others into their scam. We're seeing some obvious red flags from her coworker and her coworker's mentor. They're using Autumn's vulnerability at the time against her, and they are pushing the idea that MLM is the only way to find success. On top of that, MLMers are constantly pushing the idea that MLMs are somehow on the front lines of the fight of gender equality in the business and entrepreneurial world. They claim that the majority of those making six figures in MLMs are women, which may be true, but if it is true, it's almost a certainty that they're making their money off of the backs of thousands of other women who are losing money. If you go to the website of any MLM company, you are bound to find the word empowerment mentioned somewhere on their website. Honestly, you'll probably find empowerment or a word of similar meaning on the website's homepage. The social media pages of thousands of reps from various MLMs are riddled with terms like empowerment, girl boss, women helping women, and female entrepreneurship. Over 73% of distributors in the MLM industry are women, and the MLM opportunity itself is highly marketed toward women. MLMs claim that their opportunity empowers women by giving them the chance to make a substantial income while still affording them the flexibility they need to take care of their families and home. When asked why they joined their MLM, many cite that the chance to be their own boss and run their own business was a huge motivating factor. So many women are ready and waiting for an opportunity to excel in the world of entrepreneurship, a world that has historically been dominated by men, and MLMs appear to offer women a chance at this. MLMs also seem to acknowledge the fact that women are still disproportionately responsible for housework and childcare than men. They appear to be breaking down this factor that contributes to the glass ceiling by giving women the opportunity to make a substantial income while still having the flexibility they require to tend to their families. MLMs have attached themselves to the female empowerment movement and feminist values. However, the truth is they actually take advantage of the very demographics they claim to empower. 
They claim that the MLM opportunity affords women the chance to make an unlimited income that directly correlates to the amount of effort they put into it, but this is far from the truth. According to a study conducted by John M. Taylor that was made publicly available by the Federal Trade Commission, over 99.6% of those involved in MLMs lose money or barely break even. Of the less than 1% who are successful, and we are defining successful here as anyone who made any amount of profit, it has little to do with the amount of effort the individual puts in and has more to do with how early on in the recruitment chain they are placed. And ironically, most CEO and executive positions in MLM corporate hierarchies are held by men. For example, Essential Oil MLM Young Living lists on their website those who hold executive positions in the company. And of the 11 mentioned positions, only three are held by women. Most other MLM companies follow suit with majority of their executive positions being held by men, while their distributor ranks are mainly comprised of women. In order for something to be truly empowering, it must be demonstrated to do so. So far, MLMs have disastrously failed to provide any data that suggests their business model is at all advantageous for women. In fact, all they've proven is that their model is very effective at making a few at the top and the founders and executives, who are mostly men, very rich at the expense of those they claim their model is built for. Thank you, Autumn, for having me on, and now let's get back to her story. Thanks, Taylor. So as my friend continued to engage in her MLM, there was love bombing at her meetings and conferences where she was lavish with compliments about her potential. There was always the next tier that she needed to reach, which was framed as motivation to push herself, and the script would be flipped on anyone in her MLM who started to have doubts. While members were initially told that their nine to five jobs were the issue because the schedule and structure of an hourly wage job is an impediment to their desires and freedom, if members noticed that the MLM wasn't providing sustainable income or a manageable schedule, they were then told that they weren't being patient enough or willing to work hard enough. While my friend really believed that she was being empowered, the MLM doctrine put a strain on her relationships and even ended connections she had with people she was dating. Excelling in business had become tied to her worth as a person, and I know firsthand that when you attach your beliefs to your worth as a person, you can become desperate to make things work so that reality reflects those beliefs. I avoided getting involved in an MLM not because I'm any smarter than the people who do get involved, but because I had already learned this lesson. So if you've been taken advantage of, I don't think it's your fault. Many of us weren't given the tools to protect ourselves earlier on. I don't think there's anything empowering about having to beg your friends and family to contribute to your business. So how can women actually rise up in the workforce? How can we empower women? What would it look like on a practical level? How could we educate women on their worth in the marketplace? Could we create an economy where work in education, childcare, and parenthood is enough to make people a decent living? We need better roadmaps for implementing gender equality, and that includes eliminating sexism towards men as well. Gender equality is pro-women, pro-men, pro-everyone. Go subscribe to The Antibot, my favorite anti-MLM channel, and just the most wonderfully well-researched MLM content. Her critical thinking skills are fire!